So Xbox Game Pass is often viewed as the absolute best game subscription that money can buy. And, you know, that that's for a very good reason. If you play a lot of games, you're actually saving money because it gets not, not only just so many day one releases, but also just high quality games on a monthly basis. The only thing about this service, though, is that because there are so many great games, it's not always necessarily easy choosing which game to play next. And, you know, that, that's where these videos come in. I, I like to highlight different games for you to play. And, and that's what we're going to go ahead and do today. We're going to talk about 25 different games that you should play on Xbox Game Pass. Now, for list purposes, though, I decided against including Halo, Gears, Forza, and Minecraft. If you're on Xbox, you're more than likely very aware of these games. They are all absolutely fantastic. And they would all be on this list otherwise. And, in fact, Gears of War and Halo are among my favorite franchises ever made. So yes, I can highly recommend all of those games. Uh, but for me, one of the best things about Game Pass is discovering something completely new. So I wanted to use their spots to highlight some other games as well. With that said though, let me know some of your favorite Xbox Game Pass games in the comments below, that way we can discover those as well. But yeah, let's just gonna jump right to the list. Number 25, Jusant. We are going to start things off with a very beautiful and unique entry. Now, Jusant isn't necessarily all that challenging, and it's not an overly long game as it only takes you about four to five hours to complete, uh, but that doesn't stop it from being a memorable, thoughtful experience. Your only goal is to climb this elaborate mountain with your adorable little companion, uh, but they keep you on your toes with new, fresh locations and ideas. By the time you reach your goal, you feel this connection to its world and your partner. If you have a free weekend to try something a little bit different, I really can't recommend command you sont enough. Number 24, High on Life. High on Life is one of those games that really shows why critics don't always necessarily get things right because despite its middling reviews, High on Life has become a fan favorite and for a very good reason. It's a first person shooter where you carry around these hilarious talking guns and you kill off aliens that are trying to harvest you for illegal activities. This is a comedy from the co-creator of Rick and Morty, and it does have a similar sense of humor, so your enjoyment will largely depend on if you enjoy its jokes or not. Uh, but I will say this, I do think that it's actually a very well-made game. The exploration and its Metroidvania elements are a lot of fun, and because each weapon has their own over-the-top abilities, the combat, it's a real joy to play. So it's not just some mindless comedy and nothing more. There's an actual good game here as well. Number 23, Monster Hunter Rise. Monster Hunter Rise was originally built for the Nintendo Switch to accommodate for its hardware, but this is still a full-fledged Monster Hunter experience, and because of its art style, it looks stunning on Xbox. Dare I say, it's even made some improvements over something like, let's say, Monster Hunter World. It introduced a better traversal system with your dog-like companion. You're going to get into the fight much quicker this time around, and its new wire bug feature not only gives the world more verticality, but it also adds an extra layer to the combat. On top of all that, Monster Hunter Rise is also a great cooperative experience, which is always a nice bonus, especially in Xbox Game Pass. Number 22, Dead Island 2. Speaking of cooperative experiences, here's another game that you and your friends can play together, but instead of hunting down monsters, you can slay countless zombies in its comedic world. While some zombie games might be a little bit more focused on terror, Dead Island 2 instead is very tongue-in-cheek as you kill zombies in creative, brutal ways. Now, the combat does strictly focus more on melee-based weapons, but there are guns as well. Uh, one thing is for sure about this game, though, Dead Island 2 goes in with the philosophy, how can we make killing zombies? Zombies, F U N. Fun, fun, fun. Number 21, Sea of Stars. Sea of Stars very well might be one of the most stunning pixel art games ever made with its striking colors and animations. I mean, right away when you first see this game, you can see the love and care that was poured into this project. But it's not just the visuals that makes this game special. It's also one of the more fun turn-based RPGs that you can play. It's heavily inspired by games like Chrono Trigger and Mario RPG. It does have an interactive component to its combat, and that just makes the combat a little bit more engaging. If if anything else, I think Sea of Stars will go down as an instant classic that all JRPG fans should absolutely try. Number 20, Tales of Arise. Xbox has done a very good job at bringing high-quality Japanese games to Xbox Game Pass this generation, and Tales of Arise is actually one of the better action JRPGs that you can play just 
period. It's a beautiful AAA game where you have to work with your team to pull off all these smartly timed combos, and it's just a ton of fun to play. In addition to that, its story is also engaging. It's about a slave that feels no pain, and he meets up with this more privileged person in the world, but the thing about her is that she can't touch people because her touch causes pain. So this contrast between the two makes for a really interesting dynamic, uh, both in how they interact with each other, but also their polar opposite views of the world, and it only gets more engaging as other characters join your party as well. Number 19, Grounded. Now we've gotten a lot of survival games over the years that focuses on crafting, but there are very few that does it quite as good as Grounded, and that's because it also introduces a whole new layer to its gameplay. There's an actual story when it comes to this game, and that's something that you don't often see when it comes to this genre. There is an end, and it's also a good RPG as well. It was created by arguably one of the best RPG studios around, Obsidian Entertainment, and you can tell when you play this game. They brought that expertise over to Grounded, and it just makes this simple survival game a little bit more nuanced than some of the competition. So if you like survival games or even RPGs, maybe give Grounded a try. Number 18, Ghostwire Tokyo. Now this is a really interesting title that's set in a nightmarish Tokyo where spirits have taken over and then you have this fast paced first person combat where you control different elemental abilities with your hands and it all just looks so impressive. It's got this spooky city and atmosphere and I, I think that's really the star of the show when it comes to this game but it's also just a lot of fun to play. The only thing is is that its performance can kind of be rough. Uh, but it does, however, have some V-Sync options that can kind of smooth that out a little bit as well. So if you do have a V-Sync display, that could help make for an overall better experience. Number 17, Wolong Fallen Dynasty. Team Ninja has always been known for making top tier action games, whether that be Ninja Gaiden or Neo. And of course, one of their newest IP, Wolong Fallen Dynasty, is no different. This is yet another great action game, especially if you want a challenge. It is inspired by games like Sekiro, where pairing is a focal point, but even with its inspirations, it's still its own thing. This is a true Team Ninja game with fun and meticulous combat. Now, its story might not necessarily win any awards, it's okay for what it is, but there's not many games that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Wolong's fun overall combat. Just be prepared for a challenge. Number 16, Power World. Of course, we have to talk about 2024's biggest surprise. Power World absolutely took the world by storm, reaching more than 25 million players. And what's crazy about that is that it's still growing as of the making of this video. What's all the hype about this game, though? Is it really just Pokemon with guns? And actually, no, it's not. There are some Pokemon elements in this game because it is a part of the monster taming genre, and you can clearly see the design similarities. But outside of that, its gameplay is completely different. This is actually a survival game that plays more similar to something like Ark Survival Evolved. So in other words, it's a monster taming survival RPG. It's an interesting combination that surprisingly works very well. Uh, however, you kind of keep in mind that this is an early access title, so it, it's not a perfect game. They are still working to improve Power World even more, but for what it is, it is a fun experience, and, and that's exactly why people are loving this game right now. It's already fun, and it does have potential to be even better in the long run. Number 15. Hellblade. Okay, so this game is a little bit older by this point, but the reason that I wanted to highlight Hellblade in this video is not only because it's one of the best single-player story-driven experiences to this day, but more so, its sequel is right around the corner. Hellblade 2 is slated for May 21st, which that game looks absolutely excellent. Uh, let's hope that it lives up to its potential, uh, but I would highly encourage you to play through the first game before its sequel releases. And, and let me tell you right now, you're not going to regret it. Hellblade is a psychological thriller that begs the question, what's real and what's not? You play as a character that's constantly questioning her own mental state, and, it, and it's just a wild ride. The acting and facial animations are, are some of the best that I've seen in any type of game, and it also has great audio direction as well. Number 14, Tunic. Okay, so Tunic is a completely unexpected game. Everybody's first thought when they see this game is that it's some type of Zelda clone. 
but that's really not what this game is. I mean, sure, there are some Zelda inspirations here, there's no doubt about that, but it's also a very Souls-like game. You have the bonfire system, and it's actually a very challenging game. Some of the bosses are legitimately difficult, and you have to be mindful in its combat. One thing I'm absolutely sure about, though, is that this is an amazing game with a perfectly crafted world. This is not only one of my favorite games in this list, but it's also just one of my favorite independent games, period. Number 13, A Plague Tale Requiem. Plague Tale Requiem is one of the most interesting single-player games on the market right now because it's great story and unique atmosphere. It's set in a rat-infested world driven by the plague, and, and you play as younger kids just trying to survive in this world, and because of that, its gameplay focuses more on stealth than flat-out action. You really don't see many stealth-based games like this anymore, uh, but Plague Tale Requiem is the perfect example as to why this genre can be so thrilling. You have to be cunning with your every single move, but what I really like about this game is how all that ties in with its characters and world. There's just not many games that tells a better story than Plague Tale Requiem while also delivering great and unique gameplay. Number 12, Remnant 2. What if you made a Souls-like game into a third-person shooter? Well, that's pretty much what Remnant 2 is. It's a class-based shooter with Souls-like combat, and this is actually a brilliant combination. Its combat can be thrilling, and it can also offer a lot of challenge, as you've come to expect from the Souls-like genre. What I really like about Remnant 2, though, is that it takes a popular genre, and it kind of morphs it into its own thing. It's inspired, but it's not a clone because it has its own unique twist. And there's just so much to do in this game. There's a lot of worlds to explore and it also has a diverse set of enemies. It does a great job at keeping you on your toes and even better here is that Remnant 2 makes for a great cooperative experience. Number 11, It Takes Two. Now talk about surprising games, It Takes Two is a wild ride that constantly throws new and refreshing ideas at the player. It might be a 3D platformer on a surface, but there's just so much more to this game. And what makes it so special is that it always centers on cooperative gameplay. This is a mandatory cooperative experience, and truthfully, I think it's one of the best, if not the very best, cooperative experience ever made. It really is that good, and you and your partner will always have to work together to solve and get through each level. Now, I don't want to spoil any of the stages for you, but just kind of go in and play this game because it's you know it has an interesting story. It can be funny. It can also be deep at times. Uh, but it, you know, this game honestly is just a masterpiece. That's really the best way to describe this game: a cooperative masterpiece. Number ten: Yakuza and Like a Dragon. I really don't know how Xbox pulled it off, but they made some kind of deal with Sega to bring over a large portion of the Yakuza franchise. And when I say a large portion, I mean that they brought the majority of the mainline franchise over to Xbox Game Pass. This includes Zero through Seven, Like a Dragon Ishin, as well as Like a Dragon Gaiden. That is an insane amount of content. Uh, but just to kind of put things into perspective, to go through all of these games, that would take roughly 240 hours. And let me tell you, it is an engaging, thrilling 240 hours to spend your time on. This is without a doubt one of the very best story-driven franchises of all time. It can go from goofy to serious to just downright emotional. It's got so many twists and turns along the way. It's also a very atmospheric series located in Japan, and there's just so much to do from game to game. Most of the series has beat-em-up combat, except for the newer entries, which are turn-based. Based, but there's also a ton of mini games and side things to play as well. If you are new to the series though, because these games are all connected, do make sure to start off with Yakuza 0 first, which ironically is actually one of the best in the series. Number 9, Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal very well might be one of the most smartly designed first-person shooters on the market right now. This is not just your typical first-person shooter. This is a game that brings back that fast-paced retro style to modern gaming, and then they fill that with platforming and powerful, precise shooting. It's intense, but what makes this game so amazing is that it's not just a mindless shooter, there's a real strategy to Doom Eternal as you fight off an onslaught of demons. Id Software did it though. They made a modern but still retro shooter that is the perfect blend of power and precision. Number 8, Dead Space. 
one of the greatest horror games ever made is officially back with a brand new remake. Now, some people will refer to Dead Space as Resident Evil in space, and you can definitely see some similarities between the two, but Dead Space is, is still its own thing. It takes place on a space station, which really lends to its claustrophobic environment, and that's something that really stands out about Dead Space. The tension is always just 10 out of 10 because of its close quarter creepy setting. Where it really separates itself, though, is that unlike other zombie games, you don't specifically target their head, but instead, you'll need to shoot off their limbs. There's a real strategy in how you deal with these enemies and manage your resources at the same time. The only thing that I have to say, though, is that please, EA, let's continue the Dead Space franchise. Number 7, Lies of P. Now, we've gotten a lot of Souls-like games over the years, but Lies of P very well might be the best attempt that we've seen from a company that's not from software. Lies of P is a truly great game that was heavily inspired by the likes of Bloodborne. Even still, though, this is not just some kind of clone or carbon copy. It does have some fresh new ideas as well. It's familiar, but it's also different. And actually, speaking of different, its story is based on Pinocchio, but with a twist. It tells the story of Pinocchio in just a completely different way. And it, it's really fascinating to see play out. So seriously, as long as you're up for a challenge, Liza P is kind of secretly one of the best games that's released in the last couple years. Number six, Resident Evil. Now, there's actually a couple Resident Evil games that you can play on Xbox Game Pass, including Resident Evil 2 and the Resident Evil 3 remakes. Both of these are all-time classic horror games. I mean, if there's any horror game that you absolutely need to play, these here are the games. To this day, Resident Evil 2 is my favorite in the series, and it's also just my favorite horror game ever made. It strikes a perfect blend of being scary while also being fun with its combat and puzzle elements. It also has a very rich story with great characters, and, and all this just catapults this entire franchise. After you play Resident Evil 2, just don't be surprised when you need to play the rest of the series. Number 5, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, and also Hollow Knight. Yes, I do have two games here because they do have a similar target audience, and I do believe they're equally good, just kind of in different ways. On the surface, they are both Metroidvania style of games, but they do focus on different styles of gameplay. Hollow Knight is more of the Dark Souls of the Metroidvania genre, focusing on its challenging combat. It's got a dark and grim world. And then meanwhile, you have Ori, and it's just the complete opposite. It's got a beautiful and vibrant world, but it does tell a rather emotional story, and it focuses more on challenging platforming. In fact, its platforming is so good that I think it's actually better than most traditional 2D platformers, especially when you consider Ori's boss sequences. Now, do kind of keep in mind that there are two Ori games. Do play Ori and Blind Forest as well, but both these games are truly going to test your skills in different ways. And if you like the Metroidvania genre, these are absolutely must-plays. Number four... Starfield. Okay, so Starfield is a very polarizing game. Some people love it, some people don't. But I think it does have a lot to offer to specific players. This is a massive game that has a ton of things to do. It has a thousand planets to explore. There's relationships. You can buy your own home. You can create your own spaceship. And, and, and that's just really the tip of the iceberg. Where I think this game really shines, though, is with its side missions. There's a lot of in-depth side quests that's just as interesting as the main quest. So I think for Starfield, it's more about the journey than it is about the destination. I think for Starfield, just kind of take your time and don't rush through its story. Let the universe absorb you. Yes, Starfield does have some flaws, including its traversal system and exploration, which I, I don't think was handled super well. And I don't like that it's 30 FPS only. But I think the combination of its story, the side missions, the gameplay, and its massively ambitious universe makes it worth a playthrough. Number 3, Persona 3 Reload. It's honestly crazy that for years, fans begged Atlas and Sega to port the Persona series to more platforms, and now here we are in 2024, and not only did they finally listen, but they also launched Persona 3 Reload directly into Game Pass day one. And let me tell you, this is a top-tier JRPG. It has a stylish art style, and it combines excellent turn-based combat, monster taming, and even social sim elements into one 
complete masterpiece. That is what this game is. It is a masterpiece for the genre that has inspired so many games after it. If you've never played these games before, though, uh, you do play as a high school student, and, and basically you and a group of other students discover a parallel world that impacts the human world. So you kind of balance out your everyday life. You go to school, you build relationships, you do all that stuff, and then you also travel to this parallel demon world. It's got a great story and cast of characters, and if you like this genre then Persona 3 Reload is a no-brainer. Number 2, Psychonauts 2. Now, I've always viewed the first game as an all-time great collectathon 3D platformer, which, by the way, is also available on Xbox Game Pass. Go check it out. But not only did the sequel turn it up a notch, but it completely blew my expectations away. It's got quirky, memorable characters, it has tight platforming, the world is brilliantly designed, and when you combine that with all of its just insane amount of creativity, this is just a special game. Another thing is that it does touch up on some mental issues as well, so Psychonauts 2 can surprisingly be deep at times. There's going to be times it'll be humorous and lighthearted, but they can switch it up just like that, and it, it's just a very well-told story and an incredibly fun 3D platformer. And at the number one spot, I have none other than Hi-Fi Rush. This was such a welcome surprise when it first released, and it's quickly become one of my favorite games ever made by Xbox. It's really a one-of-a-kind game because there's nothing else like it, and, and that's something that really hits home with me. Coming from somebody who's played games since the early 90s, there's not really a lot of games that takes me by surprise anymore, but here you have Hi-Fi Rush. It's this rhythm-based action platformer, and everything in its world syncs up with the music. It's not only unique, but it's also perfectly executed. And then on top of all that, it also has a fun story filled with charming characters. So from its animations, to the combat, to the platforming, and just absolutely everything, I really can't recommend this game enough. It is a pure joy. You absolutely need to try this game out, and that's why it sits at my number one spot. Anyways, though, that's it for this video. Hopefully, you found some games worth playing yourself. Again, let me hear your favorites in the comments below. But, till next time, peace out.